Hey guys, this is an honest review of how we've grown zucchini over the years and the things that have worked and the things that have not. So come follow me in. So as you can see, zucchinis are going really great this year. Um, we've honestly never had a bad year with zucchini. I think they're one of the easier things to grow. And if you are gonna have a garden, I would say this is a great place to start because they are an easy plant to grow. Uh, we do have several different sizes going on here. We have these <laughs> ginormous black beauty ones right in here. Absolutely gorgeous. They're one of my favorite variety. They just grow great. We do have a few different sizes in here you'll see when I go through and talk about everything. And that's simply because um, we do a little farm stand and some people like to have them a little bit smaller, which they're a lot more flavorful and crisp when you get them smaller. And then we have some people that just like them really big. So we have a few different sizes and pick them at different times to accommodate what people like around here. The reason some people like them really big is they like to have them huge to make multiple loaves of zucchini bread or whatever else they want to make with them. But anyways, back to it. So some of the important things I have learned about zucchini over the years, gloves. Oh my God, gloves. I can't tell you how many times I have come back here and wished I had gloves because I end up getting all the prickles poking into my hands and everything else. And how as soon as I get started, I'm too lazy to run all the way back up to the house to go get gloves. So number one thing I've learned, always have gloves. Um, and other than the gloves, another thing I've learned around here is you need constant airflow with zucchini. Um, otherwise you end up with a lot of mildew. So you do need an open airy space. You can prune them just like you do tomatoes and it's okay to have to prune them back every once in a while. It's not going to hurt anything, but when you do prune them, make sure you're not letting the leaves all touch each other and spread, um, the mildew or whatever disease you have going on. Another thing I've learned is you wanna make sure that you have these long leaves at the bottom. So if you do end up getting like a windstorm in your area because you wanna have an open area of wind flow, you wanna make sure you have leave these down here because it's gonna help when a storm's come through so it doesn't blow them and uproot them. We have in the past had these grown out in the field, which they did great. The only reason we moved them back here is we have ducks and ducks, unfortunately, really like the zucchini plant themselves. So they uprooted a bunch of them and destroyed a whole patch one year, which was super big bummer <laughs> since I think that year we had, you know, 15, 20 growing out there and they were doing great till we let our ducks at them. So that's another thing I've learned around here is if you're gonna have ducks, you need to have them in an enclosed area where they can't get at them. But another thing is if you do have a windstorm, you wanna make sure that they do have these base plants so they don't get knocked around and uprooted. We have had quite a windy summer and we haven't had any problems with these blowing over and I credit that to them being really, you know, they have a good base. When you have a good base, you're not gonna get tipped over. So that's an important thing with zucchini. Uh, we really haven't had too many failures with zucchini to be honest, which is a great thing. Um, but a few things that we did have was a little bit of the mildew, which you can see on some of these plants here. I did leave it to show you, but I will go through later and prune these out. But this is what I'm talking about is you get this um, mildew on here and then it can affect the plant. So you do wanna trim those off and get rid of them as soon as you notice it before it starts spreading. Another thing we had with um, zucchini is the bugs that get in there. So you do need to get on top of those when they're really small so you don't have a big problem later. Plant a little bit later and then the threat of those bugs generally tapers off. What we've used in the past is diatomaceous earth. So when you see the bugs, you get that on there right away and then it kills them and they don't spread. But you wanna get at that really soon. If you wait too long, then you're gonna have a bigger infestation and you're gonna have a lot more work. We did have that one year. We were able to get it under control really early so it didn't become an issue later on but other than that zucchini like i said is pretty easy to grow and as you can tell it just kind of overtakes everything which is fine especially if you have the space for it which we do and then you just get a ton of growth 
The only other thing that I've learned is one year we did zucchini and yellow neck squash in this area here and you did get some cross pollination. So that was a little bit of an issue. That's why this year we chose to just do zucchini in here and not the yellow neck. Um, but these are growing great. They're huge. Like I said, with zucchini, as soon as they start flowering, they just keep growing and you just need to check on them. Make sure you're pruning them when you need to. We got this. Um, otherwise, just pick them at all different stages. These are getting kind of big again, so I'm going to need to get in here shortly and start harvesting. But they're really easy to grow. If you're starting a garden, it would be definitely one plant I would say to start with because it's just throwing in the seeds, keeping them watered. For us, things that I've learned is this plastic down. When we put this plastic down, I have to do zero weeding and it makes the watering more concentrated because you're just getting it in the spots that need to be watered. So it makes it for less watering. It makes it for zero weeding. So it's very easy. Literally for us, it's throw the seed in, water it, and that's pretty much it for zucchini. We don't have to do anything else as long as there isn't any bugs and as long as we don't have any um, plant health issues. And like I said, with these, even if you have a plant health issue, you just trim it off, get rid of that part, and it grows back. So you don't have to worry about over pruning them because there was a few plants in here that we had a problem with and I cut them back completely. They grew back within a month and started flowering and doing beautifully. That's my honest review of growing zucchini over the years here. And if you want to check out our last year's video where we crammed twice as many plants in that little area, check that video out over here.